I've got an airplane and it's flying with an air velocity of 420 meters per second on a bearing of north 40 degrees east. And when I say it has an air velocity, a lot of people say airspeed, but I, I want to point out air velocity, like airspeed, talks about the motion of an object with respect to the air. So if we know what the air velocity is, then what we're saying is that we know that velocity of the plane relative to the air is equal to 420 meters per second north 40 degrees east. That's what air velocity means. Then it says the plane is observed to have a ground speed of 500 meters per second in a north 10 degrees east direction. So when we say ground speed for the plane, what do you suppose that's telling us? Yeah. The plane relative to the ground. Yeah, the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. Great. Okay, so you need to be able to decode these things a little bit. I don't want to see any food in here. Oh, I thought you were eating something. I'm sorry. All right. For velocity of the plane relative to the ground, <laughs> you're just poking your cheek with your tongue. All right. 500 meters per second north, 10 degrees east. All right, no problem. Now before I go any further, I always like to do a little bit of a sketch of these vectors just to make sure I sort of know what they look like. So off to the left hand side here, I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna say, okay, velocity of the plane relative to the air, 420 meters per second north, 40 degrees east. Well, that's gonna look something like this. where 40 degrees is the angle relative to the north. And then if I have 500 meters per second north 10 degrees east, well, it's going to be a little bit of a longer vector, but also uh, a more acute angle relative to the north, this angle right here. So we've got a sketch of what these two look like. And we haven't even asked a question yet, but we've set up what we know. Okay, So here's the question. What is the wind velocity in this scenario? What is the wind velocity? And if I ask for the wind velocity, uh, what I'm really asking for in terms of subscripts is the velocity of the air relative to the ground. All right. Now, once upon a time, we made a statement something like this. We said that, in general, anytime you have an object moving in a medium where the medium is also in motion, we could set up a vector equation, velocity of an object relative to a stationary reference is equal to the velocity of the object relative to the medium in which that object is found plus the velocity of the medium with respect to the stationary reference. And we talked about being uh, a boat on a river, where the river was in motion relative to the, the shore, and the boat was in motion relative to the river. So the object is in the medium, and the medium is moving relative to an external reference frame, a stationary reference frame. Okay, So that's the pattern. And in this case, we could plug in our comparable values. So instead of velocity of object relative to the stationary reference frame, that would be the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. The plane is the object, the stationary reference frame is the ground. So we're just plugging it into a very familiar setup, which is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the air, that's the object rel relative to the medium, plus the velocity of the air relative to the ground, or the medium relative to the stationary reference frame. Okay. And that can be done every time. Every time. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try and keep these fairly simple for us. And again, because I like to really spell it out for myself, because I'm only simple, I like to draw the diagram underneath of this vector equation, really to help me think this through. Maybe you become a pro someday, become a professional uh, air in the wind calculator. Who knows? You don't have to do this sort of thing anymore. But just to start, it's always a good practice. So the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, well, we said that looked kind of like this. Nice acute angle, long vector. Velocity of the uh, plane relative to the air, 
slightly shorter vector, less acute angle, okay, 40 degrees there, and we can label it up, 40 degrees, 10 degrees, 420 was the magnitude, 500 was the magnitude, okay? Do we know velocity of the air relative to ground? No, sir. That's what we're trying to find. So this is a still a big question mark. It's the mystery vector that we would love to know. And you would be shocked, or maybe you wouldn't be shocked to, to know how many people I see say, ah, I know how to get this one. I add this one plus this one. Is that what the picture says? No. It says that this one here plus the mystery vector is equal to this one here. We've already got the resultant. We're trying to find out what one of the other vectors was that added up to get the resultant, okay? And that, that's the, the name of the game for a problem like this. And a lot of people get messed up because they're so used to just adding vectors tip to tail. They sort of get lost. They can't see the forest for the trees, okay? So we want to find this one here. And I, I like to draw it out. So if I'm drawing it out, and this is just a sketch, we can make a better sketch in a minute. But just as a sketch, I could say, all right, this guy here is going to be my resultant, velocity of the plane relative to the ground. It looks something like, like this. Nice and long, 500 meters a second. And I know that this plus a mystery vector will give me that, that arrow that we just drew. So off at a slightly more obtuse or less acute angle, but shorter. And obviously I'm not drawing things perfectly to scale here. I'm just trying to think out my problem. Can you please leave that for a moment? Would you like to borrow a pencil? There you go. Got to choose your times. And so the mystery vector might look something like this. Okay? Just to complete the story. And so we know that where we're going with this is that we're going to be finding an x component here. And we'll find a y component here. We'll find a y component here. And we'll find an x component here. And what I know, just by looking at it, is that by comparing this x component to this x component, the x component of the answer I'm looking for will be the difference between the two. And by comparing this y component to this y component, the y component of the vector that I'm looking for will be the difference between the two. I can look at that and just sort of logic that out without having a whole lot of skill or, or exposure to this thing beforehand and know, and know that, that that's what I'm doing. And I, I called this the rectangle method once before. And I, I brought up the fact that there were two young ladies that took this course a few years ago that figured this out and presented it quite nicely to the class. I think it's a great method. And I, I would definitely like to give them credit if only I could remember their names. All right, so, sorry ladies if you're watching this video. Um, we said before that this great big long vector, recognizing that I didn't draw it to scale, is 10 degrees relative to the north. We also said that this shorter vector is 40 degrees relative to the north. But based on the way I've drawn it, do I want to label up the 40 degrees, or is that going to get messy? That's going to get messy. Couldn't I label this guy instead? And if it's 40 degrees from this vector to the north, what must this vector be, or this angle be? 50. Let's label it up as 50 then, OK? I mean, we can make use of this, these kinds of properties. 40 plus 50 equals 90 degrees. That's where that came from. All right, let's label up the lengths then. This vector here has got a length of 420 meters per second. And this long vector has a length of 500 meters per second. And if this was math class, we would just go and we would find these unknown sides for this triangle here, the little one down the right, and the big one up in the left. Questions? How did we get this 50 here? Oh, Because the information we were told about the 420 meter per second vector was that it was at an angle 40 degrees to the east of north, or north 40 degrees east. So they told us this angle, or I told you that angle. And then we sort of deduced that this must be 50. And it's useful to have the outside angle for this situation just because it makes it more clear. Okay, not, not because of anything other than that. There's no, there no big theorem there, just for clarity. All right, I'm going to redraw this diagram bigger, because in this case, bigger, well, it's not better, but it's clearer anyways, okay? So I'm going to slide this up, 
for, for me. Set it off to the side, I'm going to redraw it nice and big. Off to the side. You can keep your little drawing if you want to. As for me and my house, we like big drawings. Okay, so I have three triangles here that I'm dealing with. This one here, this, this bottom triangle, we're actually calling VPA. The big top left triangle, we're calling VPG. Because we labeled it up once before, we haven't changed anything. And this one in the right hand side here, we're calling VAG. Okay, and so what I'm finding here is VPG in the X direction, so VPGX, VPGY, VPAX, VPAY, and I'm going to use the VPG values, which I know, and the VPA values, which I know, to get those values, and then I'm going to use those values to find VAGX and V. A, G, Y. One thing I want to point out, and it's going to be based on something that we said earlier. We said a couple minutes ago that V, P, G equals V, P, A plus V, A, G. And we've got that represented in this picture. But what I want to point out to you is just a, an interesting little aside that actually may be helpful as we think through this problem. If this is true, then it's also true that V, we're, look, we're trying to find VAG, right? That VAG is equal to VPG minus VPA. Can you see that? Mathematically, does that sort of, that, that floats? Doesn't sink, right? Makes sense. Holds water. Okay. So I want to be a Y thinker and I want to be an X thinker. First, I want to deal with. Uh, first, I think I want to deal with the Ys. Okay. So for Y thinking, I want to say V P G Y is equal to V P G. Oh, I should have labeled up my angles again. Ten degrees. 40 degrees. V oh, 50 degrees, you're right, you're right, thank you. We went through that whole spiel. 50 degrees. Anyway, VPGY is equal to VPG times cosine of 10 degrees. And that'll be 500 meters per second times cos of 10. And I got some people that claim that they're being quick on the calculator today. That's the claim. What's 500 cos of 10? Yeah? 492.4 Bert. Thank you. 492.4 meters per second. Okay. I'm going to put a red box around it. I think I'm in love with that value. Um, now I want to find VPG in the x direction. So we're being an x thinker now. VPGX is equal to VPG times sine of 10 degrees. And maybe you're going to beat me to it. 500 meters per second. Sine 10. Somebody quick on the draw. What do you get? Bird again. 86.82 or 83? It's not 829? It's 824. Oh, okay. I'm looking at my own writing here. I'm so glad I'm not using my writing. 86.824, so 83 um, meters per second? Okay, good. No, not 83. <laughs> 0.82. Boy. All right, so we've got our VPGX and our VPGY. 
let's go back to our VPA. VPA, the other thing that we can find x and y is for right off the bat, VPA y is going to be VPA. Now be careful here, if I'm finding the y's, is it sine of 50 or cos of 50? It's the opposite this time, right? Not the adjacent, so it's going to be sine of 50. VPA sine of 50 degrees. And I'm going to sub in my values. Um, VPA was equal to, was it 420? Yeah. 420 meters per second times sine of 50. You got it, Jacob? 321.74. 321.74 meters per second. I love it. And I'll put it in a red box just to show how I feel. And then VP. A in the x direction is equal to VPA times cos of 50 degrees for 20 meters per second times cos of 50. Bird again? 269.97. Okay. 269.97 meters per second. Thank you, Bert. You know my dad's name is Bert? I actually have an uncle named Ernie. They obviously predate the Sesame Street characters, but... <laughs> okay, Bert. All right, that's just what I say to my dad. It's hard to hold myself back sometimes. All right. You don't have a brother named Ernie, do you, Bert? No. Oh, that's... You have a, an uncle named Bert? Evan? Evan? Evan's not like, Evan's not a Sesame Street character. All right. Between you and me, we could go places. We could totally do a Jim Henson thing. All right. Let's not. All right. <laughs> Carrying on. Back to, the, back to the task at hand. I want to bring up something that we said once before. I keep on going backwards. It's always one step forward to take... Uh, Two steps back. Let's take two steps forward this time. At least we'll get back to the same place we started. Um, VAG, we said before, VAG, which is what we actually care about, is equal to VPG minus VPA. And now the claim I want to make is that VAG in the y direction, because that's what I want here, by the way, that's this value right here, VAG in the y direction should be equal to VPG in the y direction minus VPA in the y direction. Let's check to see if that sort of matches with logic in terms of the picture, okay? If I want to get this little value here that I drew in green, can I get it by subtracting this value from this value? Okay. The algebra matches the picture. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it when a plan comes together. Let's plug in some values here then, okay? So VPG in the y direction is going to be equal to VPGY, which we, or sorry, VAG in the y direction is going to be equal to VPGY, which we wrote here already, 492.4 meters per second, minus VPA in the y direction, which was 321.74 meters per second. And you know what I didn't really think about before to communicate, but I would have lost marks if this was a test. We should have made north positive and east positive so that our, our signs make sense here. My mistake. I would have been big marks off. All right, what's VAG in the y direction? Somebody who can do subtraction. Somebody other than Bert. Bert is just flexing his mathematical muscles too much today. <laughs> yes, Ms. Patel. Uh, 170.66. 170.66. Point six six meters per second. I like it. All right, I'm gonna tackle the x's then. And what must be true about the x, uh, the y's is probably gonna carry through for the x's. But I'll I'll spell it out. V a g in the x direction. Oopsie. In the x direction is equal to v p g in the x direction minus v p a in the x direction. Okay, and we can plug in our values and, and solve for that. Now, I'm going to run out of space here because I didn't leave myself enough paper, but 
I'll try and do my best. 86.2, sorry, 8.29 meters per second minus 269.97 meters per second. Somebody who's quick with the calculator, what do you get? Oh, I spit all again. She's beating your bird. She's edging you out. What is it? Negative 183.146. Okay. 46 meters per second. Now in terms of negatives, that actually kind of makes sense, uh, provided that I messed up my diagram. Negative 183.46. That means that this vector here actually overshot the first vector a little bit. My sketch isn't quite on. It happens sometimes, right? Make mistakes. The diagram wasn't quite right. The diagram should have looked something like this. You believe it? It should have looked something like that. Yeah? Um, on the test, would we, should we go back and kind of correct it? No, and correct the diagram? No, the diagram's just there as a brainstorming tool. So if you happen to mess up the diagram in your thinking process, that's fine. If at the end of a question it says, please draw a vector diagram for this problem, yeah, you should go back and fix it. But this is just a part of our thinking process. We could have done the whole thing with this table. But I think most people would have gotten lost. So it's good to have the diagram to help us along. Okay? So we do have a negative x direction on this VAGX. That's okay. It just means that it sort of goes a little westerly. So I'm going to pull out another piece of paper, and I want to use this x component and the y component for our VAG. So we find that VAG really looks something like this. I didn't quite draw it properly in the first place. That's okay. Not the end of the world. And it's got an x component that goes westerly, because we're calling west negative for the x direction. So V A G X is equal to negative 183.146 meters per second. And V A G Y is equal to 170.66 meters per second. I'm kind of overdoing it here. I wrote the negative in there, and the vector obviously shows that it's going west. So I'm kind of overexpressing the truth here. I want to make sure that we put it in writing. Now the next step, because I wanted to find the velocity of the air relative to the ground, because this question really just asked us for the velocity of the wind, I've got to find this magnitude, and I've got to find this angle, because velocity is a vector. So we're going to go back to our good old friend, Mr. Pythagorean. And VAG equals the square root of VAGY squared plus VAGX squared. We'll, we'll do that calculation to find the magnitude. So that's going to be our uh, 170.66 meters per second all squared plus. And you can leave this again as a negative 183.146 or you can recognize that it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to recognize that it doesn't make any difference because we're squaring a negative value and it's just a geometric shape. 183.146 meters per second squared. Again, all square rooted. What do we get for VAG? You got it. 250.334. Does anybody want to second the motion? Nice. Like it. it sounds about right anyway. Now for the theta value, so there's our VAG. For our theta value, we're looking at finding an, an opposite over adjacent ratio. Because why use the hypotenuse? We just calculated that. I don't know if I trust it yet. We can at least get the angle right if we happen to have messed up the hypotenuse. So I would say tan theta is equal to the opposite, VAGY, over the adjacent, VAGX, Subbing in our values, 170.66. You notice I'm always trying to use the unrounded values in my step-by-step -step calculations. Oh, and you know what? I, I also said I should be rearranging before I sub in values. So I kind of, I, I sort of did a no-no there. Tan, uh, theta equals tan inverse of those values. 
It's okay. QED, quite easily done. Um, is equal to, did anybody find the angle yet? You are on fire today. What'd you get? 42.98. Anybody want to second the motion? Motion carries. Sergey, you're just seconding it because you want to be a good friend. Is it really 42.98? Okay. So approximately equal to three sig digs later, we're going to say approximately equal to 43.0 degrees and approximately equal to 250, and I'm going to put a bar over the zero to indicate that it's significant, meters per second. And so if we wanted to have a therefore statement, we could say therefore the wind is blowing at 250 meters per second, and this 43 degrees is that angle, so west 43 degrees north. Beautiful. I like it. We just figured out how fast the wind is blowing in what direction.